Welcome back to Story Mode. Now that we've been in our house for around 18 months and settled in quite well, I wanted to start collecting video games again, and better still, arcade games. Welcome back to 2001, where we have video film clips of dudes wearing Atari t-shirts. Kylie Minogue still going with Can't Get You Out of My Head, but my two picks are Feel Good Incorporated by Gorillaz and Drops of Jupiter by Train. It's 2001 and I have been gaming more than I have in my life. Amiga. Atari, Super Nintendo. Yep, I was playing everything, even new stuff at the time, but something was missing. I wanted an arcade machine. Although I had one, the red one, I wanted another one, or if I could afford it, maybe two, to have my own little arcade at home. At the time, I did have one arcade machine that I had at my grandparents' house. That moved over into our house, and that was a deluxe version of Power Drift. I've owned that arcade for over five years. When I first met Joel about 13 years ago, I remember walking to his grandmother's garage and there was a power drift. And I thought, what the hell is this machine? I've got absolutely no interest. And as soon as I jumped on it and started playing it, I thought, hey, this is a bit of fun to this. But this time I wanted upright arcade machines. Yep, a few upright arcade machines. So I could put a vertical shooter or a horizontal run and gun and something completely different in the next one. So I started looking in the local paper and to my surprise, there were hardly any arcade machines around. I think this is a time arcade machines were kind of dying off. There just wasn't enough activity. Sure, there were still new arcade machines coming out in the arcades, but for the reseller market, especially for the home market, this wasn't booming. All of a sudden it came to me. When I worked for Flash Amusements, I had a book with me of all contacts of people who are operating arcade machines or selling arcade machines. So I just looked in the book and started ringing around to maybe an operator that would have an arcade machine for sale. After a few phone calls, I come across this guy I have not spoken to in at least 10 years. He had plenty of arcade machines for sale and he was telling me all about the industry. We spoke on the phone for over an hour. He said, stop talking to me on the phone and have a look at what I've got. I went down there, he welcomed me with open arms and showed me all the arcade machines he had in his showroom. There would have been 50 uprights. And some of the uprights were crazy. Naomi, Astro City, Blast City, uh, the Egret by Tato. And he had some classic uprights, you know, the timber ones, and ones made of, you know, that, that kind of fake timber on that side, that wood grain look. I love those machines. I said I was only after upright arcade machines at the moment because I didn't have a lot of room. I had one spare room I could put all this stuff into and Mandy said if it come to it, she'd give me the other spare room. We were in a four bedroom house and she wanted one room for her things and she'd give me the other two spare bedrooms and obviously our bedroom was one bedroom. So that's four bedrooms. I explained I had a power drift arcade machine already and once I said that, he said, you better come with me. So we walked downstairs into this big factory. He had everything I could wish for. Outrun, Space Harrier, Afterburner, the deluxe, the big one, the moving one. He had everything. And if you wanted bigger, he also had Galaxy Force 2 Super Deluxe, the massive arcade that spins you around. It was incredible. I called Mandy right away and made sure I could have that second room. The room wasn't massive, it would have been maybe about four metres by four metres. All the rooms were pretty much the same size. She said, obviously you found arcade machines. I said, yes. She wanted to know what arcade machines I was actually buying, which I was quite surprised because she doesn't know a lot of the arcades. I started reading out the list and I mentioned Afterburner Deluxe. She stopped me right there and she said, forget them. That's one you've always been wanting. You've got to get that. Fine. Done. I bought it. Afterburner Deluxe. It weighs like 500 kilos. I was in heaven. For both machines was 
$400. That's right, $400 for the upright and $400 for the afterburner. I was absolutely amazed it would be that cheap. I was thinking it was at least going to be a grand. And this is back then when arcades, as I said, especially those moving arcade machines, they were just taking up room in operators' factories and the home market didn't really gravitate towards those machines at the time. There was just too much else going on. I was over the moon. I said, you'll have to deliver this stuff because one, I don't have a ute or a van or anything to pick it up. He said, no problem, it'll be there tomorrow morning. They delivered it at like six o'clock in the morning. Well, this is how operators sometimes work. They work crazy hours. They delivered at six in the morning. Now the upright went in the house so easily. I already had around 20 arcade boards and I'd changed games like Karnov and Chelnov and Shinobi and Golden Axe, but Afterburner, not so easy. It was 1,350 millimeters wide and two meters long, so 2,000 millimeters long. And it was just way too big to get down the hallway of that house. So I had to work out how I'm going to get it in there. Well, there's only one option dismantle the machine. The problem was there was no manual that Sega printed on how to disassemble an Afterburner Deluxe. So I just had to work it out and go slow. And I had to go slow because I had to pull all the wiring out of the arcade machine to get to the base. You see the base was all scratched up and faded and I wanted to respray it like new. I washed the base, I used a special degreaser and soap and then I masked up the machine, put a bit of cardboard down and just sprayed it. Now what I should have done is taken my time and did it properly, but I was busting to get the machine inside. So I just used an aerosol can, not a proper painter's gun, and the results were pretty good. As I said, I masked it all up, made sure I didn't cover the Seeger sign, and it looks pretty good. Then I took it inside. Well, I had to pinch myself. I couldn't believe it. Once it's finally assembled, I had Afterburner. The arcade I always dreamed of having in my very own home. Back in the, in the 80s, when I went to Flashback Arcade, I remember sitting in Afterburner and asking my mum, I'd love one of these at home, that's my dream. And she'd say, sure, sure. Well, going 20 years later, I've now got one in my house. But the problem was, Afterburner started to seem very alone. It was just this big machine next to an upright, and sure, Power Drift was there, but that was in the other room. The room couldn't really sustain two big machines like that. But the afterburner did start to wear out after approximately two weeks. I didn't get bored of it, I just didn't want to play it. It needed something to complement it. Well, that's what I had to do. Get another machine to complement it. 